Welcome back to another episode of the Dev Blog. Not as many changes to cover this week as last week. Um, that being a like a relative term because the changes, although few, are greater than last week's, which were massive. I shouldn't say massive, but there were a lot of them, but they were all pretty small. So the first big thing, which this has been um, on the back burner for th three months, I think, ish, maybe a little longer. It is now possible to make the stone arches or arcs from the PK arcs mod. So you will see here that uh, it's available in basalt, brick, desert stone. Uh, however you pronounce this stone, N nice maybe? I have no idea. Or maybe it's not a silent genus. It would be genus. I don't know. Uh, obsidian, netherrack. We got the rhylotic tough. Uh, serpentine, shale, I believe, slate, and plain old stone. If there are any other stones that I missed, uh, let me know and I'll get them added. I do not plan on adding all of the cobble variations, like, you know, desert stone cobble and just normal cobble and mossy cobble. Or, co I think there's a, there's a cobble for the rhylotic, and I think there's a cobble for... A handful of oh, I think shale has like a cobble thing, and slate they have two different ones. I'm just doing actual stones themselves, with the random exception of the brick block, which I don't really know why I added that one. But those are finally available in the stone carving station, which, if we take a quick looky see here. It's in here somewhere. It's probably near the end. Here we go. Um, it can be crafted pretty inexpensively. Two stone chisels, a hammer, and two pieces of marble. And then, of course, you can make the locked version of it with a lock, and you can make the unlocked version by crafting the locked version. You know, same as with all the other recipes. I will be adding more things to that later. I just haven't gotten them added yet. Um, the main thing off the bat that will be getting added is these guys. So all of these little statues here that are in the hall, which uh, this is very far from being a complete list of the monsters we have. Uh, these will all be available to make carvings of. And maybe I'll do some of the other animals as well. But first I need to have these things drop some kind of... I don't know what I'm going to call it, but there'll be something that these mobs drop that you will need in the recipe to carve them, uh, like a like a blueprint, essentially, but obviously an animal wouldn't be carrying around a blueprint of instructions on how to carve it, but something along those lines. So you'll have to kill the, the things in order to be able to make them. So that should be pretty cool. Um, an intruder alarm has been added. I'll do, give you a little tutorial on this. Um, this texture is still kind of a temporary thing. If you dislike the craft recipe, blame Silicone Penguin and Daniel1. I don't know which of the two of them made the decision. They did the initial code, I guess. And then I just did some... Uh, some uh, some polish and some little tweaks and stuff. So this works. I don't think there's anybody on the server right now, so it'll be difficult to really demonstrate. But say this uh, say the school was my house here, so I could put an intruder alarm just inside the front door, like so. And then I can right click on it, and it'll pull up a little uh, form spec here, so you can you can name your uh, your alarm. So I could call this front door. Uh, and the info text just says intruder alarm, but if you right click on it, it'll still say front door. You hit proceed. And then, uh, yeah, you pretty much leave it alone. And then another player comes along, which, again, I don't have another player on right now that I can have demo this. I suppose I could log on with an alt account, but it's too much work. Uh, basically, a player comes along and goes near my door. The alarm detects that they're there. It plays an alarm sound in its own area. So the person that triggered the alarm will hear the alarm sound so that they know that they have been uh, 
you know, they've been caught trespassing. And then the owner of the alarm, assuming they are online, this only works if you're online for this alerting part. If you are online, you will get a chat notification saying the name of the player that is intruding in your area and triggered the alarm. And you will also hear the alarm sound, assuming obviously you're playing with sound turned on, which you know what, I think I have sound, I had sound muted this whole time. I guess it doesn't matter because there's no sound coming through anyways, cool. All right. Um, so then after it's been triggered, it does turn itself off, which will actually be a red light if it's been triggered. And then the info text on it, instead of saying intruder alarm, like we see on the corner by the door there, it would tell you the name of the player who triggered it and you just punch it to turn it back on. Um, the yellow here is when it's turned off. So I can turn it off if I'm inviting somebody to my house or in this case to the school. And right now this alarm just sits here. It's not, it's not actively doing anything. It still saves the name. All you have to do is punch to turn it on. So that's how that works. Um, like I said, the texture is a temporary thing. I just, I don't know what would look better. Oh, I broke part of the wall. That's not cool. Um, and then also, like I said, it only works when you're online. So if I had an alarm someplace and I wasn't online, I won't get any notification. The person that triggers the alarm will still hear the alarm sound. And the alarm, when I do log back on next time and I look at that alarm, will be turned off and will say the name of the person who was there. I'm kind of toying with an idea of making it turn itself back on after a few minutes because right now after it's triggered, it goes to a triggered state and then it no longer is actively scanning for players around it. So I might change that. Um, we didn't want it to just constantly run because if somebody was next to your house and they weren't necessarily doing anything illegitimate, they were just, they were there traveling through or whatever, the alarm would just keep triggering over and over and over. We didn't want that happening. So it turns off, but if I'm not online, then I have to go around and check every single uh, one of my alarms to see if they've been triggered. So at some point I would like to get that hooked up with like the telemod. So when I'm offline, it'll send a message to me. And then when I log on, it'll tell me that the alarm was triggered by, you know, whichever. So it'll get, just tell me the exact same thing that I would have seen had I been online. But because I wasn't online, I just get it as a message after the fact. So that is something that uh, I do want to get hooked up, but is not hooked up yet. Okay, so I covered the stone covering station. Uh, Scorpion bosses had a, a tweak. I am not going to, um, not going to spawn one in, but basically what was happening before was a, so the scorpion boss attack doesn't actually attack you itself. It spawns um, the baby scorpions and then the mid-sized scorpions, and then those do the attacking. It was just spawning in tons of them. So it currently, and this might still get tweaked a little bit, it like checks every, I think 10 seconds, or no, every, every five seconds? I don't remember what I said it to. But it checks every X amount of time for the number of entities in the area. And then if there are fewer than a certain amount, it'll spawn with a chance. It'll try to spawn, I should say. It'll try to spawn. And if it has the right number come up, it'll spawn one of those two scorpions out. If it doesn't, it'll set that timer for that five seconds or whatever again and cycle that through. So you won't just get a kajillion scorpions all running around chasing you. So that is a welcome addition. And then lastly, hopefully this didn't break too much stuff for anybody, uh, we have new bows. So as you may remember, we had bows or crossbows before. And these were actually from the castle weapons mod. So I did do an alias. I'm hoping everybody's bows if you had them came over properly along with your uh, crossbow darts or bolts. Uh, I think they're called differently in different parts of the world. Um, I've heard them referred to as both. So we still have the crossbow. All of your existing crossbow bolts should have transferred over into the good crossbow bolts. 
but there are also weak and poor. A weak crossbow bolt is literally just a stick. Well, you craft the stick into the crossbow bolt. Uh, you can make a fair one, which uses flint, which honestly, I think flint is more difficult to get than the arrow tips because you get 20 of these from one steel ingot. So I think it's less less hassle to get the steel tipped arrows. Uh, and they are the best, so that is what you want to go with. But as you'll notice, these don't need uh, feathers for the fletching. I've never owned a crossbow myself personally, but from what I remember seeing on crossbows, they don't really have like arrow feathers on them. Like I think they have much smaller feathers to you know do whatever, but they're flying so much faster and they're so much shorter and stuff. I don't know. I'm sure there's physics and stuff behind it all. And then because it's a new mod, we also have just a normal wooden bow, which can be crafted as such. And also has the three tiers of arrow. So you have a weak arrow, which is stick and a feather. You have the fair arrow, which again, flint, stick, and arrow, or uh, feather. And the good arrow is the steel arrow tip, the stick, and the feather. So pretty easy there. And then you have the bow itself. These work, um, I think, a little bit differently than the old one did. So I believe the castle weapons mod just checked if you had the arrow in your inventory anywhere. Um, and this does it a little bit differently. I'm going to make it day because it's dark and I can't really see what I'm doing here. So the bow, I can you have to put the arrow in the slot to the left of the bow. And then I can shoot my normal arrow. And it lands down over here. And it looks like I lost that arrow. There is a chance of the arrows dropping, so you can reuse them. Um, I think I think this is two of them here. Yep. Um, and then you have crossbow bolts do the same. Um, let's see here. You should be able to get these out pretty far. The um, I might go over the wall. Yeah. The physics and stuff behind the arrows themselves, yeah, I think it, I think it escaped, have changed a little bit. So if you were like a crack shot with the old crossbow, you're probably gonna have to relearn how to be a crack shot because, ooh, that went flying, because it's changed up a little bit. Um, yeah. So play around with them. The main differences here, let me pull this back up. So the arrows have to be used with the bow, the bolts have to be used with the crossbow. Um, if you have normal arrows, you can't use them in the crossbow. And if you have crossbow bolts, you can't use them in the bow. I can demonstrate as such. So I can't load that because I have the wrong type of arrow. Um, the three tiers of them do provide differences. So the weak arrow, has less speed and does less damage. That's why it's a weak arrow. And the same thing with the crossbow bolts. The weak one does less damage, has less speed. Projectiles fired from the crossbow just travel faster overall because it's a stronger spring, whatever. Stronger bow, I don't know. Um, but it's stronger, so it shoots them faster and henceforth they go farther before they hit the ground. And then lastly, this has also been requested for a very long time, exploding arrows. It only works in the crossbow. And um, I, I don't know where to go test this. I am, I am slightly fearful. I don't know why I did that. Slightly fearful that people are going to just... Uh, Go Willy Wonk or Haywire with this? This seems really slow because fast was turned off. Can I find like a, a floating sky island would be perfect? Um, I'm not seeing anything. This is, this is great. Um, as of the time of this recording, the arrow is not tied to any sort of a privilege. So... Anybody can get and shoot these. 
Um, yeah, I showed the crafting. Stick of gunpowder and a good arrow. I need to figure out some way to tie this to some sort of a, a privilege so I don't have people just going willy wonkers, blowing stuff up. Uh, it does respect protections, though. So you can't blow up things that other people have protected, or at least you shouldn't be able to. I don't understand why I'm not hitting any of those sky islands. I mean, there ought to be some around here. Oh, because I am way too high. That's why I'm not 3,000 nodes high. I need to go lower to like, what are those things at? 500, 600 something? All right, well, as we're going down, um, oh, that's actually the last of it. All right, this is perfect. So I got something here from, oh, actually this is even better. Map gen something got tweaked and changed. So, there you go. Shoots uh, pretty much an explosive. Now, I will point this out. If you shoot this arrow at a mob, the arrow will, assuming you hit the mob, the arrow will not explode. It'll damage the mob, you know, like it got hit with a normal arrow, but it won't explode it. Reasoning behind that being, because the mob is a soft body, it doesn't, um, it doesn't, the impact's not hard enough, even though this completely would not actually work in real life because an arrow striking a living creature is going to be enough of an impact where uh, it would still trigger the detonation switch. But for whatever reason in this universe and existence, that doesn't happen. Um, so yeah, actually the reason it's like that is because I would have to write a whole bunch of extra code. Well, maybe not that much, but I'd have to write extra code to uh, have the explosive dart blow up when it hits a mob. So it just doesn't. So pretty much don't use them to shoot at mobs unless you're shooting the area around the mob and then the explosion damage could hurt it. So that is still possible, but yeah. And that is, uh, that's the last of the updates. So we'll just, uh, leave off here with this nice little view. If you are interested in playing on the server, uh, that information should be down in the video description, as well as the web page to, uh, or the link to the web page with more server information and like the dev blog posts from older in text form. Uh, also, Friday nights, I am streaming development on Twitch and DLive. So if you're interested in that, subscribe to those. That should also be linked on the page. Um, otherwise, if you're on the Discord, make sure you have the, I think, stream notification roll. And you'll get a ping from me on Discord 15, 20 minutes before the stream starts. So you can hop on over and watch if you're interested. And, of course, they're available to watch... Uh, I don't know what it's actually called these days, but back in the old days, we called it the tape delay. I, I'm sure they don't call it that anymore, though. But yeah, that's, that's it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.